Welcome. I want to walk you through how I start an altered book journal. This one is larger than most of the ones that I've used. I'm excited. So you'll see here that I removed several pages in between the seams. You can see where pages are threaded into the binding of the book. And with that, I see where the middle is and then I remove extra pages. So this is the seam right here. And then here's the glue. So when you have it where it's glued in like that, you wanna keep those pages intact because it keeps your book stronger. And you'll also notice these coffee stains. I like to just throw paint and coffee and stuff on my pages to add some kind of mess before we start. Here you'll see I left a little bit of edge when I ripped out the pages. That gives you something on the other side of the seam to help keep the pages in place. And you can see later on you can uh, like paste those down with glue or with papers. I'll show you an example of that later on. But yeah. The whole starting point, you just need to remove a good amount of your pages because they'll get thicker as you go. So also with my pages, if the book is really, really old, I will use gesso, a layer of translucent gesso with water to um, kind of seal the page. These pages are so thick though that I don't need to do that. These are alcohol inks that I'll be playing with. They're not ideal for paper because it's fibrous, but it's still kind of fun to play with. And then I'll also be using liquid acrylics like this. It's fluid, so it's very watery. Where this other kind is not quite as watery, but still um, spreads very easily. So after you just kind of mess up your pages, if that's a route you want to go, you just pick where you want to start. I'm going to start with some of the alcohol ink. So you'll notice that when it hits the paper, it really will stain that particular spot. Ideally, you use alcohol inks on almost like a photo paper that is kind of sealed in a way so that it's not fibrous because that really allows the ink to do what it what it does uh, but this is also still kind of fun i'm spraying it with a little bit of water and also occasionally rubbing alcohol because that's what will help uh, like spread out the alcohol ink it reacts to it it reinvigorates the color I love drips, so I'll tend to move the book at a lot of different angles to allow various drips and color blending, that sort of thing. And right now, I'm just using different pages and splashing various colors around. I'm ready to let this dry for a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is set it up on its side like this. And then just kind of spread out the pages so that there's air in between them and they're not stuck together. If you want, you can also use something like wax paper to make sure that the pages don't st stick together as they're drying with the paint color. And now it's dry through the magic of editing. So at this point, I just pick any spread that I feel like working on. I'm going to play with a little bit of mixed media here. So I'm using matte medium. It's liquidy and it's a really good form of glue as well as being an extender for acrylic paints. If you need your acrylic paint to be more watery or more fluid, then you can add matte medium to it. But right now I'm using it for this tissue paper. Tissue paper is great because it has a translucency to it, which I really enjoy. You'll notice that I put a piece of wax paper underneath this page, so in between the two pages that I'm working on. That helps prevent stuff from spilling over to the back 
it will still a little bit sometimes, but it helps prevent too much. So when you work with tissue paper, you want to be very aware of how your brush will cause things to rip and tear if you're too rough. This can be a great texture, having those tears and rips, but if you want it to be smoother, then you just use a light press of the brush to help get out any air bubbles and securely attach it to the page. But you really only need to go over it maybe once with a semi-damp brush. If you want to increase the opacity, so that means make it less see-through, or in this case, make it a deeper green, you'll notice that by just folding the paper over on itself, it makes those places darker with the paper. It can also add some interesting folds and textures. And you'll notice over on my right here, the paper that I'm not gluing down is lighter and that's because it's dry. So once I move over to that part, slowly, So I'm adding some glue and I'm spreading that around to make a pretty even layer. And then as I'm pushing the tissue paper down, I'm allowing it to be wrinkly and kind of bunched up and messy. And you'll see as it gets wet from the glue and the water, it becomes translucent. So you can see the pictures underneath it but it also gets darker like this. So you'll be able to tell the areas that you've already dampened with your brush and glue and water and the areas that you haven't. So that prevents you from going over areas that are already too wet and then risk ripping them if that isn't a look that you're going for. I'm also being very intentional about pressing down along the seam because what I'm also using this tissue paper for is increasing the durability of the pages so it's almost pretty tape <laughs> or uh yeah i guess tape works but because the papers are now attached to this tissue paper that goes across and now i'm going to time lapse through just finishing up gluing down all my tissue paper because you don't have to see that all in real time. So now I'm bringing in some Higgins ink, which is a water-based one as opposed to the alcohol inks. And I'm just dripping it out with the little dripper and then spreading it out with this fan brush. And I really enjoy that it's also translucent because it gives you a hint of the book page behind it and it also will collect in the tissue paper in different ways so the pigment will kind of build up in the creases because of the water and add some wax paper underneath here to help prevent the pages from sticking together. These are drips of the fluid liquid acrylic. You'll notice it's very liquidy and it's also a little more opaque and I'm still using the fan brush. You can really use whatever kind of brush you like. I think that the fan brush can provide an interesting texture, especially if you're doing some crosshatch. This is a more full-bodied, thicker acrylic paint. So I'm adding some of that to shape, change up the texture, and you'll see it's also opaque. So it's completely uh, possible if you prefer to just cover up entire sections of the original book pages. I'm sticking with greens and blues, kind of a cool color scheme here, just to avoid mucking up my colors by mixing cool and warms. The biggest takeaway right now is to just remember to play. Enjoy what you're doing. None of this matters. This is all just for fun because it's enjoyable to see how different colors blend together and the different textures you can make and how you can make 
additions to the pages that are already there in interesting ways. I can't emphasize enough that there is no wrong way to do this. Just follow your joy uh, and your playful nature and, you know, you may not like it, but it's never wrong. This is a piece of tissue paper that's actually a pattern. So if you do any sewing, you'll recognize that I think this might have been a pocket at one point. And because the paper underneath was already damp with paint and matte medium from the green tissue paper, I really only needed to go over it with a little bit of a damp brush to press the paper down to stick with all of the paint. It'll just stick fine the way it is. I'm adding some wax paper so that I can essentially shut these pages and they won't stick together. And that allows me to work on other pages. Another fun thing is if you have old books that you have from a thrift store or just, you know, old from when you were a kid or something like that, they're really fun to cut up and take little pieces to collage to make a new image. Also, if you cut them at an angle, then that can also give you a sense of direction or a sense of a foreground and a background, for example. And I'm adhering this again with matte medium. If you have something really thick, like a postcard or a photo, you might wanna use matte gel which is thicker. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'm gonna try that in another page. So you want to make your paper kind of damp before you adhere it to the page. I like to just spray it with a water bottle on both sides. I find that that helps to saturate the paper so that the glue isn't what makes the paper wet. You'll find if you just let the glue, uh, if you glue dry paper down, It'll tend to wrinkle because it's absorbing the moisture from the glue and then that will make your paper kind of warp and wrinkle in ways that you may not want. And if that's something you're trying to avoid, I highly recommend just lightly dampening the paper before you put it down. That can be tricky if you're playing with something like tissue paper, but for something like this, it's fine. Keep in mind with magazines, they aren't meant to be archival. And so the ink can wash away pretty easily if you use too much water and too hard of brush strokes on it. So this is just more of the fluid liquid acrylic and fan brush. I love the fan brush because you can just move it at all these fun angles and get just really fun flowy shapes. This one is a little more opaque than some of the other ones, but you can see it's still a bit translucent because you can see the butterfly underneath and the little children. I'm coming in with just a dry paper towel that's kind of been all smooshed up. It kind of having it all crumply gives you really interesting texture when you press it down because it will the paint will only adhere to certain parts. And it also helps you just kind of spread around the color in a different way. That's really fun and textural. And then I'm just gonna bring in the paper towel and I'm actually dabbing some of this up. Paper towel is a great way to remove excess water or excess paint. And this is one of my favorite colors, the magenta. And you can see that this one isn't quite as liquidy, but it's also not as thick as this tan that I just put down. And these I'm gonna spread around with a palette knife. So again, that's just a different option of how to make textures on your page and spread around color and mix color. And to be completely honest, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just playing. I'm just smooshing paint around in pretty ways. And I choose colors that I know will go together okay without kind of turning a mucky brown color or gray. Nothing wrong with those colors. You just don't want to always mix your colors and just kind of ruin 
the vibrancy of them. So yeah, just pressing paint down and playing. A little more matte medium, and we'll put down this little brick wall picture. It doesn't matter what kind of brush you spread around your adhesive, and in this case my adhesive is matte medium. You can always use Mod Podge, which is cheaper. It doesn't, it doesn't last as long as far as years and stuff, but if you're just playing and starting out to see if you like this process, it'll work just fine for you. So I'm putting down my wax paper because these two pages are very wet and I've let it dry for a little while. Magic of editing. But you'll st see it's still a little bit wet and some of it has stuck to the wax paper, which I can now use as, um, not a stencil, but I can press it down and it'll bring some of those smooshes of color onto the other page there. And it just makes it messy, but I like that. However, if that's not your style, then certainly don't do that. I'm bringing in a bit of this lavender gray color just to cool down some of these vibrant reds, make them feel a little less overwhelming. And I'm not even adding more color right here necessarily, I'm just bringing in a lot of water to um, basically dampen the color that's already there. And then you can see the pink that was still a little bit wet spreads really easy and mixes in with the or lavender color. And usually when I'm doing intuitive painting or visual journaling, my first step as far as creating the background is really just coloring the space, filling in the blank canvas or blank page. And these are obviously not blank because it's an altered book, but blank as in it doesn't have Carly mess all over it yet. And so I just try to get something going on every page to develop a background. And all of it might not show when I'm done with the pages or when I'm done with an intuitive painting, but it doesn't matter because it's really just enjoying what I'm doing. And then the finished product is just, it's just the finished product. It is what it is. It's the result of joy as opposed to the goal or the objective of the process. And so we're just adding a little bit more water here and there. I love how different colors blend with water. It's very fun. And you can also lift it, especially when it's, when it's wet like this, where you can actually get drips or the flow of water. I'm adding in a little bit of spray. You can't really see it very well, but on the right hand corner there you can see the spray bottle and spraying onto the wet paint also helps move it around for drips and that sort of thing. If you're just looking for, you know, mixture of color. And here I'm just going in with the dry paper towel again and just picking up some of the color. And you'll see there's certain places where the paint has already stained the paper, especially where the alcohol ink was. That stains really well. And I'm just kind of gradiating the colors together at this point. I don't really have an agenda. I'm just kind of playing and, and doing what looks fun or what feels like you know, it might look neat for the colors or whatever. And just spreading this paint around a little bit with the paper towel. That's the joy of this process. You get to use your hands or a palette knife or crazy brushes. 
or paper towels, stencils, whatever you can find that makes marks you can use. So now I'm going to let this dry for a while. Again, I'm setting it up on its side and you'll see this teal page that I'd worked on earlier is still very damp. And so I'm removing that wax paper that was there just so that it doesn't stick to, to the paper as it actually dries. Because if it is very, very damp when you have the wax paper there, it will attach to the wax paper some. You can get it off and it's usually not too big of a deal. I'm going to let this dry now and then I will do a part two that is just other ways to start different spreads from this book. So that will be really fun. Keep an eye out for that.